Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Sailed Republic video. Let's go over some things that you might want to consider as soon as you're hopping into 7.1 as I did just launch today. So one of the things that I do want to mention is if you want to use the code LOTSMELGUS, L-O-T-S MELGUS, you will get a free decoration of Melgus that you can put up in your stronghold. It's just a poster that goes on the wall, basically like a painting, right? Picture frame. So that's kind of cool. One other thing that's really neat that they've done is they've added the ability under combat styles. Here you can go and change all the colors of the icons that show up on nameplate. It should be exceptionally useful for PvP and may also be useful for some PvE instances. One thing I really want to point out is the fact that they are bringing additional gearing options to players to be able to keep upgrading your gearing. So basically everything can now be upgraded to 330 item rating other than PvP gear will cap out at 328. And that means that when you're upgrading gear, make sure that you remember to take out your augments so that you can save them for future use. So there are a couple other things that you want to know about as well. So one of the things is with your legendaries, your set bonuses, they've actually changed it now to reduce the upgrade cost when you hit certain milestones. So it's a little bit awkward to figure out how to get here if you want to check for yourself to see what your progress is like. You want to scroll pretty far down in your legacy window, we're going to find feats of strengths, and then we're going to be looking at advancement, and then we're going to be looking at legendary items. So as you can see right now, I do not have the achievement for getting two legendary items at 330 equipped, but I do happen to have those two legendary items ready in my inventory. And there we go. Now I've just unlocked that achievement. You can see that it's been completed. So now when I go and try and buy legendary items all the way up to and including 330 item rating, there'll be 2,500 tech frags instead of 6,500. Looking forward to being able to do that on a bunch of tunes and also continuing on to get the achievement for 334. Yeah, I'm super happy that they've done that as the tech frag cost of the legendaries was just frustrating for me, especially since I wanted to have these on multiple characters. And it was something that I really struggled to have enough time playing the game to be able to keep advancing those. All right, so I wanted to give you a quick preview of the new vendors that we've got available for the R4 Anomaly Operation. A little bit of a tongue twister for me. We have two different vendors here. They've still kept our upgrade vendors for our Flashpoint Operation Gear. Just shove them over to the side a little bit here. So starting with the Story Mode vendor, you can actually see all of the gear that's available right away if you want to look at it. And everything just takes one Story Mode token. So every single time you kill a boss, you're going to get an R4 gear token for Story Mode. It starts off at item rating 328. And then as you get 328 items and you spend tokens, you can actually upgrade them to 330. More importantly though, if your group is exceptionally good at the Take game at the or you just want to bash your head into the wall until you get good enough, uh, we've got this veteran. This is totally a bit different. This is going to allow us to get up to the 340 gear. So as you can see right away, uh, they do have gear that starts at 322 and it just takes a token that you get from beating bosses. And additionally, they have this virulent gear, which is artifact quality. And this requires tokens from specific bosses. So if you are progressing through the veteran mode of R4 Anomaly, you're going to be able to get these tokens. There's only one or two tokens given out each time a boss is defeated. So you kind of have to pick and choose to share them within your team, figure out who gets the tokens, right? Keep everyone happy. Uh, I doubt we'll be seeing many pug groups for this anytime soon. As far as I know, upgrading this 332 gear all the way to 340 by acquiring more tokens, I don't think it converts it to purple. As far as I know, it's going to be blue. Another vendor we're going to be seeing for gearing, and I don't know if you'll be coming here too much, but you might want to come here a little bit. If we go into the middle room of the supplies section of fleet, so this is where our item modification vendors are all the way up to level 70, you'll find hide and Z. So basically what happens with these guys is they allow you to deconstruct existing gear you've got at 328 and 330 to be able to get currencies that allows you to get enhancements and mods so that you can customize your gear as much as you want. At this hide and seek vendor, yeah, I've got some exciting news. I'm glad that I didn't publish the video yet so that I could add in these corrections after the fact. So what you can see me doing here is I'm actually deconstructing a whole bunch of gear to make sure that I have the currencies to be able to upgrade two pieces of gear all the way to 330. So we're gonna upgrade these pieces to item rating 330. We're going to want to have one prototype gear. So that's blue gear, it can be Columni, Hazardous, right? Take your pick. And then we're also going to want, if you have it available, a piece of 330 ricotta gear as well. So if you don't have ricotta gear, not the end of the world. It's just nice to have both, but you can't do everything with the ricotta gear. You definitely need the prototype blue gear at 330, and then you can go ahead and do the ricotta as an extra bonus. So I'm gonna go through the conversations with these uh, Cretchens here, and somebody started jumping around, hanging out in my cutscene. 
I think it was an accident, but it was kind of weird, but kind of funny at the same time. So when we come up on the end of the conversation choices here, the most important one is going to be that 330 prototype. That's the quest right there. Pick that one. So that one is kind of your goal for getting the fastest gear grind possible. It's not 100% clear when you read through the quest, but we'll show you on screen right now exactly how that works so you know, no questions asked. As you can see right now, there's nothing currently available from the Zeke vendor. So now we're going to hit up our deconstruct window. We're going to take our one piece of blue 330 gear and throw it in there. And pop, look at that. We get the uh, quest completion telling us, sweet, it's done. And then Hyde wants to talk to us again. We'll go through another set of cutscenes where he'll be glorified about it. The quest is fully complete now. And let's take a look at what we have available on the Zeke vendor. My apologies for the uh, bad camera work of not moving my UI onto the recording area of the window there, but you can kind of get a glimpse. We've got a whole bunch of things available to us at item rating 330, and they are the blue prototype quality. So these are armorings, enhancements, mods, barrels, hilts. So you can take all of the gear except for the accessories and suddenly buy for credits all the stuff you need to make 330 item rating. Bam. Oh, love it. It's a great way to reduce the gear grind, not make it as frustrating. And yeah, now you can put it in any gear you want. So definitely worth it. I would definitely check that out. I haven't 100% looked at how the stats compare, but based on what I've read online, people are saying that it's pretty much the equivalent of wearing 330 purple gear. So what we're going to do though, is we're deconstructing the 330 artifact gear. And that unlocked the second quest, which I'd already picked up for the artifact. And the reason why I want to show you this is because it's going to unlock some additional items that we can get from the vendor that are going to be purple quality. I'm not sure if it's working as intended or just a bug, but as you can see right now, I can now get enhancements at item rating 330, but nothing else, right? So that's where it's quite good and very useful to do the blue 330 piece first because it'll get you the best bang for your buck. And then if you have a 330 Ricotta, you can do that as well. Don't be afraid to butcher your existing sets. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating to give up that one Ricotta piece if you don't have any spare purples at 330, but it's totally worth it to be able to have access to this, to be able to customize moddable gear and make it 330 without having to worry about grinding or getting weird currencies or doing upgrades. The big disadvantage here is you're not going to have access to any of that moddable stuff when you're dealing with the new R4 operation gear at an item rating above 330. I do want to point out a few different things about how you want to approach the gearing now with everything being available at 330 except for PvP. So if you are not going to be doing the new operation R4 to get item rating above 330 and you already have your 330 Ricotta gear, sure, just stick with that. Easy. No changes are needed. Now, if you don't have that and you were on the PvP path, going up to item rating 328 for your PvP gear is definitely not a bad idea, right? So you can go to 328 PvP gear. It'll be practically just as good as getting 330 blue gear, which can be achieved from master mode flashpoints as well as veteran operations. As far as players who haven't really started the gear grind for this expansion and they're just new to 320, 322 gear, it opens up a lot more possibilities of how you upgrade your gear now as pretty much everything can go to 330. And yeah, just makes it a lot easier. I'm glad to see that change. Well, there's also a new daily area that's coming to Manon. So as you can see here, I do actually have an mission available to me. So I can click on digging deeper if I want to, and then I'll be transported to the mission area. And there's also going to be some kind of like an introductory quest to get you into the daily area on the non. And there's a little bit of story in there too. They've added a few cutscenes and stuff. Uh, don't expect a lot, as I said in my last video. But yeah, I am a preferred player. I'm not a subscribed player. And I still got access to the content that came out with 7.1. So that's really great to see that I'm going to get to do some of the story content without having yeah. to resubscribe. Are you all right? Honestly, I'm not great. I see. Then it is fortunate I came along. I think so too. This feeling gets worse the closer we get to Elam. What is it that you're sensing? When you came back from Elong, Scourge and I both got this weird... Let's head over to Manon now and check out the daily area to see what's available to us. So I've loaded up the Manon kind of landing area here and as you can see here is a general terminal to be able to pick up all of these different heroic weekly daily missions that are available to us. And there's also a taxi down here which is called the Joint Fine. Operations Taxi nice Droid and allow you to travel to different areas within Manon. So that's kind of neat to see that there's a little bit more for us to explore than before. And as you can see here I'm being asked to go inside of this room here 
be able to speak to somebody to progress kind of a little bit more of the story as well. And this will kind of be that wrap request that gives you more context, more story related to doing the daily area in Manon. So, one last place that we want to visit is show you where the new operation is. So we're going to go to the FPS Destroyer of the Worlds, also known as Mechshaw. So once you're on Mechshaw and your frame rates have been decidedly destroyed, you might want to travel over to Slugpole Harbor. All right, so from the Slugpole Harbor, all right, so from the Slugpull Harbor quick travel point, you're going to walk upstairs, you're going to head over to kind of the right direction there, and then down this alleyway, and this is where we're going to find the operations door to get into the new R4 anomaly. Now there is also a little bit of a wrapper mission that you can do as well for a bit of story. You have to have completed the storyline quest for the Nature Progress or Duxon before you have to pick this one up. I haven't taken the time to figure out where it is yet, but... There isn't too much else I wanted to share, it's just kind of a quick primer on some of the new things in 7.1 and some of the things to be looking out for. There's definitely a variety of random little things here and there. They've done some balance changes, some of the classes, changed some of the tacticals, introduced lots of new bugs, and made a whole brand new gear grind to start working on again. Yay! So hopefully those of you who are enjoying the game and who are at that point where you were looking for this new story and some of the ways to increase your power through getting new gear so it's easier to keep doing the content that you're working on. Yeah, these options are now here for you as well as a few small quality of life changes. I hope you guys enjoy. It's getting way too hot in here so I gotta be shutting this thing all down before uh, and make it, yeah, very dangerous to my health. As always, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.